thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate you taking the time. Let's start by talking about how you left Syria and what prompted you to leave Syria. I was arrested several times, but the last time there was a huge explosion in the area where I used to be, and I received information that they intended to arrest me yet again. So I just left. That was about a month after I went out of prison, and I went to Cairo. So let's talk about this new coalition. Uh, expectations are very high about what you can deliver. And I'm just wondering, how is this coalition different from the Syrian National Council? The National Coalition for the Syrian Revolutionary and Opposition Forces takes in the Syrian National Council and many other opposition groups. The Syrian people has been looking forward to the unification of the opposition forces. The creation of this coalition has sparked a lot of optimism. This optimism has also been reflected on the local and international levels. One of the main concerns about the Syrian National Council was that it was not representative of all of the different uh, sects within Syria. Does your coalition represent all of the different minorities inside Syria? The National Coalition for the Syrian Revolutionary and Opposition Forces is not a parliament. It is a revolutionary assembly that aims to topple the regime. Its internal system allows it to be open to subscriptions by the various opposition forces according to certain procedures. The coalition takes in a wide number of Syrian opposition groups, revolutionary, civilian and military ones. And there are currently dozens of demands submitted by various groups to enter into the coalition. And we welcome everybody on board. I'm just wondering, what do you say to those communities who perhaps would be willing to turn against the regime, but who are fearful of what will happen to them afterwards? The Syrian social fabric is tightly woven, and this gives assurance to its various components. This is our main asset in reassuring the brothers from the other components. But in truth, there is no components, there is only one Syrian people. In many of the areas that have already been liberated, the people who were not necessarily in favor of the revolution were not harmed. People only hate the men who harm, arrest and kill them. It's not a sin for anybody to be born in this or that faith, or to have different cultural backgrounds. The Syrian social fabric is our main guarantee. The Free Syrian Army is another guarantee. Yesterday, they reached an advanced level towards its unification and announced the formation of the Supreme Military Council. This council has pledged to take all necessary measures to guarantee the safeguard of human rights and also pledged to protect the entire Syrian people and defend its various communities. from here, but can you enforce it on the ground inside Syria? Yes, there are areas that I would confidently say are safe areas. All individuals living in these areas are well and safe. It's the regime that's tried using every possible manner to stir sectarian strife. Until now, it has mostly failed. The awareness of the Syrian people will thwart the other issues that haven't risen to the surface yet. Does the coalition speak frequently with rebel commanders inside Syria? Frankly speaking, communication with the commanders inside Syria is not as we would have hoped for it to be. But our relationship is strong. We are in contact with them. Yesterday, I phoned the Free Syrian Army's chief of staff and congratulated him on this step that they've taken, and which was very important for the Syrian people. If the regime falls tomorrow, will you be able to control all of these different rebel groups operating inside Syria? Uh, 
This indeed is a question that needs to be asked. I expect that there would be a good control on the ground because of the presence of hundreds of civil groups operating inside Syria. They don't like to appear in the media. They are working for the good of our country, diligently, but discreetly. And they are organizing themselves for when that day comes. They are already securing bread distribution, traffic control, they are preoccupied with setting up judicial committees, security committees. The Syrian people has taken big steps in the establishment of the day after committees. I could not say that this is covering every single part of Syria, but it is widely developing. That, of course, in addition to bigger institutions that will try to give more support to such groups on the ground. Do you feel that the international community has done enough to help Syria? No, at all. The international community fell short in its support to the Syrian people. For 20 months, the Syrian people have been killed, slaughtered, its son have been killed, its women assaulted. There are dozens of reports about children being tortured to death. The international community started to wake up now. Some organizations provided some modest aid, but we thank them for that. When I was in Aleppo a couple of months ago, people were saying to me, not we're disappointed, we're angry. We're angry with the West. We're angry with America. Do you share that anger with them? I understand the feelings expressed by the Syrian people. They are suffering a great deal. They are hurt to see that the countries around the world are just watching what they have to endure. The steps taken by the United States and by European countries were very slow. But now, we are hopeful that the American administration would move at a faster pace and send some positive signals to the Syrian people. Of course, the big concern that the U.S. has had about giving weapons to the rebels is that these weapons might end up in the hands of extremists. How can you guarantee that heavy weaponry wouldn't end up in the hands of extremists? And how concerned are you about the problem of extremists operating inside Syria? I think the media has exaggerated this whole thing. The Syrian people has been dying for 20 months. Should we leave it to die? We should try to look at positives and negatives. None of the groups operating inside Syria now has expressed a negative stance towards the West, nor did they say that they would undertake acts that threatens the security of any countries. We respect all what ensures the security of the international community, but this issue is highly exaggerated. There are many groups with clear objectives and only aim to protect the Syrian people. These could be provided with arms so that they would not be subject to the bombardment of the regime, especially in the liberated areas that are continuously being pounded by Syrian warplanes without having any means to defend themselves. Let's talk briefly about the situation on the ground in Syria. Do you believe that the regime is close to falling? The regime is being weakened, and the revolutionaries on the ground are getting stronger. The morale of the people who rebelled against the injustice is getting higher. The regime could fall. That might depend on some of its own elements, defections, other cracks. But in any case, the regime is nearing its end. We don't want this to take long so that the Syrian people wouldn't have to pay even more with their blood. Would you like to be the president of Syria? Uh, I'm not thinking about that now. And I wish uh, for Syrian to have... Uh, I wish for the Syrian people to get their freedom. And then it will be up to them to decide what they want to do. What does it mean to be recognized by the U.S.? <laughs> The U.S. administration has a big weight in influencing global decisions, and when the United States takes such a step, this would be like an announcement to the international community that this regime has fallen and that there is a new entity shaping up. 
This new entity has only been created through the blood that Syrians had to shed in order to obtain their freedom. But a step like that would pull the rug from under the regime and on all levels, politically, economically and militarily. Do you think it's an important step or do you see it as too little, too late? No, it's an important step. It is much anticipated and it would have a huge impact in holding back this regime.